for a lovely speech. I'm happy to follow that. Thank you, Dr. Leppard and faculty, for inviting me to speak, and thank you all for coming. Congratulations to all the graduates. My name is Betsy Bates Free, and I'm a candidate for a side degree, a side degree today. Five years ago, as I contemplated giving up a stable, long-time career for a new path, I investigated a number of academic options to guide my journey. I received advice from friends and colleagues to just get the degree, assuring me that I already possessed the skills and compassion to make the transition from life as a medical journalist to that of a clinical psychologist. I knew that the life change I desired, touching lives rather than merely documenting the contributions of others, would involve sacrifice from my family as well as from myself. Some of the graduate schools I considered held the allure of an easier passage. Independent study, online courses, once monthly seminars, and a focus on abstract theory that I believed I could master quite readily without too much disruption of my life or my paying job. But I was torn. Attending traffic school on a computer screen seemed more efficient to me than sitting through 12 hours of bad jokes about reckless driving. But psychology? Really? If I attended a drop-in college and sent my papers into the netherworld of cyberspace, would I graduate feeling that I had any right to hold the pain of others? Would I possess the delicate tools necessary to mend emotional wounds? In the end, guided by the steady wisdom of my beloved partner and other members of my family, I chose to take a more difficult road. I enrolled at Antioch University with its 12-hour Thursdays, complex family systems orientation, and insistence on the rigorous application of science to the practice of healing the psyche. A string of parking tickets and a dissertation later, I have emerged a different person. <laughs> I have now spent 1,440 hours in Antioch's unique form of Arctic Sahara classroom temperature control. <laughs> right? Struggling, arguing, sharing, calculating, and pondering as my mind and then my soul evolved. It is only in looking back that I realize how much I had not known of myself or of my field of study. It is only now that I realize how much more I have to learn of both in what will become a lifelong quest for inner knowledge, academic understanding, and therapeutic grace. I first glimpsed such possibilities in my year one practical course as I tentatively explored my emotional vulnerability and empathized as others in our tight-knit cohort did the same. By year three, our connections had deepened, as had our insights into the roles we played as members of a society that averts its eyes to injustice and equality, both on a macro level and on a micro level as well, in interpersonal relationships and within the silenced walls of abusive homes. Year four brought rigorous demands that required balancing evidence-based precision with cultural sensitivity in exploring and treating real individuals burdened by such inequities as well as by mental illness. This year, I moved on to my internship at a family practice clinic. Every day, seeing patients, I feel grateful for the thousands of pages of reading and research my professors insisted upon. I am thankful to my classmates for providing a safe outlet for emotionally deep and occasionally painful growth necessary to the development of a scientifically grounded nurturing therapist. I can honestly say that I finally know how to code a five-axis DSM diagnosis, <laughs> how to build trust in a suicidal college student, how to sit with the desperate anger of a dying cancer patient, how to work with the ambivalence of a patient who needs but mistrusts medication, how to tolerate silence and hold grief, how to distinguish cultural pain from depression, how to map a three-generation family genogram, and how to reveal to people strengths they never imagined but always possessed. As I anticipated from the start, the journey has not been easy. 
like all of you awaiting diplomas, I had no clue in enrollment that I would be sacrificing income and paying tuition during the nation's worst economic period since the Great Depression. For me, and probably for you, this meant working while attending school, translating into seven-day work weeks that left little time for leisurely family fun, long lunches with friends, or romantic beach vacations with my husband of 30 years. My family helped tremendously with economic and moral support, warm meals, and understanding. My friends forgave my need to hibernate and pontificate. My own stamina held up somehow. So here I am, humbly prepared to sit in the therapist's chair and to do my best, do no harm, and do what I can to take forward into people's lives the valuable lessons I have learned. Will I change society? I hope so in some small way, 50 minutes at a time. Antioch University Santa Barbara's mission statement calls for education that achieves, and I quote, a rare and essential balance between idealism and experience. I believe that that phrase captures what I have gained here and hope to carry forth in my practice and in my life. I trust that whatever field of study you pursue in this socially engaged intellectually rigorous community, that you will do the same, and I wish you much success and abundant joy in your journey.